When a simple router is not enough for your view application or you're trying to build a single page application, view router is the way to go. Before we get started though, let's talk about a single page app, also known as an SPA. So an SPA is a very popular way of building a website where the user is not required to update or refresh their browser whenever they request a new page. Now this has become popular because of the use of web applications. Things like email clients, for example, you wouldn't want them to load everything that's around it just because they're trying to view one of their emails. That is a perfect example of a great use case of a single page app. Now with that being said, single page applications do add a bit of complexity into your project and they're a little bit harder to set up. But once you're set up, honestly, it is no different than developing a regular website. So View Router is the official router for Vue.js. So today we're going to be taking a look at how to get it installed in a project. So the official documentation is under router.vuejs.org. So definitely reference this documentation for any additional questions or features you'd like to discover. So I'm going to close this for now. And what I have here is just a simple view CLI application. It is a completely fresh application. I haven't done anything for it. All I've done is just run the serve command. So in a new tab, we need to pull in view router. And we do that by running npm install view dash router. This will pull in the view router package and plugin into our application. So now that we have that installed, let's go ahead and start using it. So in my application here, we're going to start with the main.js file. The very first thing you have to do is, and if you're not familiar with this, is the way that Vue defines plugins. Vue Router is a plugin for Vue. So to use a plugin, what you have to do is first and foremost, let's import Vue Router from, and it's going to be just Vue Router, Vue dash router. So now that we have that imported, now we need to use it. And that's the keyword that we're going to use. We're going to say view.use and let's go ahead and use view router. So this is basically telling view that this is a plugin that we want to use alongside with our view that we are importing up here at the top. So the next thing we need to do is define some routes. Now, if you watched the previous episode where we basically created a router from scratch, the next thing you know we need is routes. So let's go ahead and create some routes. And we can do it in several different ways. We can actually do it like so, where we have routes that equal an array of routes. But I like the notation where everything is a little bit more compact. So what we could do is actually initiate a new view router and inside of that then declare our routes. So why don't we take that approach? So we're going to say const router and this is going to be equal to a new view router, right? So we need to make an instance of view router so we can start defining our routes. Now this is going to accept an array and inside this array, the first key we're going to pass in is routes. And again, this is no different than just declaring your routes in a separate variable, but this just saves you a little bit of lines, but either way it would work. So inside of here, every route is going to need two parameters. The first one is going to be path and that's going to be equal to some sort of path, meaning a URL that you want to visit. And the second one is going to be a component, meaning the component that we're going to load. So why don't we load hello world? This is a component that just comes pre-installed with any Vue CLI application. And if you notice up here at the top, it did get imported for me automatically. Just a feature of my IDE. So the path that we're going to add is just a slash, meaning just your regular home page. So now we've got our router, we've got our routes, but we haven't told Vue about it just yet. So simple way to do this is simply just to pass in router into our view instance. So this router is belonging to this view router that we created up here. Okay, let's take a look at it in the browser. If I hit refresh, sure enough, nothing seems to have changed, but now we're actually routing. Now, one thing you'll notice right away is the following is this right here. So there is a pound or hashtag right here at the top. And this is due to the fact that browser support for single page applications isn't 100% yet. If you need to support older browsers like Internet Explorer, well, if you just route it between pages, it will actually refresh the page, which kills the whole point of a single page application. We don't want to ever have to reload this entire page, but rather we just want to load pieces or components of this page. Now, if you don't have to support older browsers, 
then we can turn this feature off. And that's actually very simple to do. Right after routes, we can add another one for mode. And the mode that we want is history mode. Now history mode is going to use push state to push different content into the site and change the address bar for us without needing that hash, which looks a little bit ugly. So we can get rid of that. Go ahead and hit that. And now we don't have that any longer. Again, if we turn this off and we go back to our page, it will automatically always add that pound. There it is. You see, it doesn't matter. I cannot get rid of it. But again, if we use mode of history, in that case, then we can get rid of it altogether and we just get a nicer URL. Again, the point of that is just for older browser support of single page applications. Awesome. So why don't we create a new component and then let's go ahead and create a new page. So let's add a new view component here and let's just maybe call it tasks. And inside my task controller, I'm not going to have anything but just some LI items. We'll just say item one, item two, and item three. Okay, very simple component, nothing crazy. Okay, I'm gonna actually copy this over and when I visit slash tasks, I want to load my tasks components. Now up here at the top, it was imported for me automatically. Again, just an IDE feature. If you're not using an IDE like me, go ahead and add that line to the top. Otherwise, your compiler is not gonna be able to find tasks. So we're just about ready to test this, but if we did right now, it wouldn't work. So let's visit the app.view and right now we're loading hello world. It's a component, but we are already loading it inside our app, right inside our main view component. So let's get rid of this altogether. And what we need to put in here is router view. So router view is what's going to tell the router where to put your component. This is where you want it to place your component. That's the point of router view. All right, let's actually check it out in the browser now. And there we go. We do see our list. Now, if we head back into just our home page, then we see that other component. And the component we're loading there is the hello world component. Why don't we change this up a little bit just so that we know that we are loading this component. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything. And instead of a message, why don't we just output hello world. And there we go. So we have hello world component. And then if we visit slash tasks, then we have our tasks list. Now this image up here, that's actually inside our app view and it is right here. We don't really need it. So why don't we get rid of it? So now when it refreshes, then sure enough. And then if we go back to just slash, but right now, the way that we're doing this, if you notice up here, right where the refresh is, you'll notice when I go to slash tasks, it actually reloads the page. So right now it's still not a single page application. And the reason for that, of course, is that we need to actually generate some links that view can tap into. So why don't we create an imaginary navigation bar here with some unordered list elements. So my first one might be home and my second one is going to be tasks, right? Just something for us to be able to click through. So what we need to put in here is another view component element that gets added whenever you pull in view router and that is router link. So let's copy this out. Let's add a new component router dash link and inside router link. That's what we're going to put home. So this is going to take one attribute and it's going to be the two attribute. So where are we going here? We're just going to slash similarly for tasks. Let me go ahead and grab that and let's add a new router link paste that back in and this is going to go to slash tasks. Okay, so back in our application now these have turned into links. Now pay attention up here right where the refresh button is. Let's go to home and tasks. Notice how there's zero loading between these two. We are not refreshing the page. So we have successfully actually added some routes and we are actually in a single page application. This is the very basics of view router and how to get everything working. But let's take it a step further. What if we wanted to pass some parameters? Let's say the following. Let's add a new route here. And this is a common thing. Let's say user. And then we're going to need an ID of a user, say ID one, two, three. Now we don't want to hard code one, two, three, because obviously every user is going to have their own ID. So sure, one, two, three would work, but one, two, three, four, that doesn't work. So this needs to be dynamic. So very similar to how view assigns something and binds it, we can actually use the same notation of semicolon 
and then maybe we can call it ID. You can also call it user underscore ID, whatever you like. We'll just stick to ID for now. So now view knows that this is actually a variable and not just a regular string. So why don't we create a new component and let's go back here and add a new view component for my user. So this is a new component and all we're going to do here is just very simple. Obviously, we're just trying to get this working. So we're going to go ahead and output out. So how do we get access to this variable right here? Well, very simple. You're going to reach for router.params.id. Again, router is just a global instance of router, the same one that we gave in here. And then params, meaning any available variables, and then id, which is what's belonging to our id right here. If I change this to user, then of course I'd have to change this to user instead. That's the connection there. So we'll keep it at ID. I'll put everything back to ID. And now instead of tasks, then of course we're going to use our new user component. This user component did get imported up here at the top. So let's go ahead and try this now in our browser. Before we do, let's go ahead and add this new route to our route links. So user slash, we'll just say one, two, three for now, and then just call it user. All right, let's head back here. Let's see user. All right, that didn't work. Let's go back here and check what happened. Okay, it's not router, it's route. So we're reaching out for route params ID. And there we go. Now we're getting one, two, three. So anything we passed in in here, a string also works through. One, two, three, four. Yep, that all works. So we are successfully fetching that. Now, obviously in the real world, at this point, you would maybe fetch that user's information and show their profile or something like that. But here it is, that's how we get some variables. So let's tackle one more thing and then we'll call it a day. What about a route that doesn't exist, right? So if somebody comes in here and just types in a gibberish, well, that's really supposed to be some sort of not found page. So why don't we create a new component and let's call it not found. And all this view component is gonna be it's just an H1 that says not found. So now in my main.js, let's add a new route. Now we wanna catch everything, right? Everything that trickles down. Think of your routes as the user is up here and it's falling through these different routes. So the first match that occurs will be the one that actually gets returned. So at the very end, this very last one, what we could do here is put an asterisk. And this will basically just tell view router anything else. If it all fails and it ends up over here, go ahead and match everything and if it matches everything let's go ahead and pull open the not found component not found got imported up here at the top so keep that in mind so now when we come back here sure enough we get not found but all of our other routes still work now the order of these routes is very important you want it to have that trickle effect so at the end is where you're going to have your wild cards that way you don't accidentally overwrite one of your other routes so that's pretty cool. This is pretty easy to implement. And again, we have all of this working without refreshing the page, not even once. Now we still do have history. So if we click through here, you see that we still have history going on up here. But again, we're not reloading the page. So everything is extremely fast and easy for the user. So that's the quick and dirty on getting view router working. Go ahead and play around with view router. And when you're ready, we'll move on to something else.